Hi, Mitch Bailey here. System performance is very important today. If you're buying a new heating and air system or replacing your existing uh, system in your home, um, you might think, well, you know what? Uh, the guy says he's putting in a certain size unit, a two ton, a three ton, whatever. But is it really giving you two tons or three tons of cooling? Is it giving the performance if it's a 16 sear or a 13 ear? Is that actually doing the performance you're supposed to? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's by testing and measuring. And hopefully I can show you here in this slides uh, that, that, how to do it. Okay, so let's get started. Um, this is a few homes that I built in Copperopolis. I'm a general contractor, and I built uh, 13 homes in Copperopolis back in 2006, 2007. I was doing it for a, 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 a developer who owned the property, and these homes range from about 2,300 square feet to 3,000 square feet, and they're ranch homes on two, uh, two and a half acres, one to two and a half acres, depending on the lot size. They're very nice, beautiful homes. This, this is La Cobra Mini was the name of the pod project. Um, one thing I remember, the design is the all-important portion of any systems. These homes uh, that we did, I hired a different contractor to do the HVAC than my own company. That contractor, he, you know, when he designed the systems, I was watching him. He would come into the house as he's laying out each of the homes, and he would just look up at the ceiling and go in the room and go, okay, this, this needs a six-inch duct, and he would draw it on the floor. And I asked him, I said, did you do a load calculation? He says, oh, no, no, that was done by the Title 24 people, and that tells him what size it needs. But he had no clue. And this guy's been in business for 10 years plus and had done hundreds and hundreds of homes in new construction, and he had no clue whatsoever whether or not it was sized correctly for this home, that particular duct work. After we were done uh, uh, with the first model homes, we fired the guy, and my company took over for HVAC because we had so many problems with the stuff that he did. And the sad part is that there's a lot of homes out there like this. As an HVAC contractor, you do have to realize that you are on the hook for 10 years on new construction homes in California. In other words, you could be sued and made to correct or fix stuff that you do incorrectly. And so that's one reason why I do load calculations. Load calculations is, uh, a, there's two types. There's a room-to-room -room load calculation, and then there's a whole house load calculation or a block load. I don't do block loads. I do room-to-rooms. The room-to-rooms will tell me uh, which, uh, how much air is supposed to go into each bedroom, how much air is supposed to go uh, in certain parts of the house, and it allows me to size the unit correctly and then size the ductwork correctly. The right soft software, which I use, I've been using for 20 years, it's very accurate. It, it really does a good job. It's quick. I can do it very easily and very quickly. And I can do it on existing homes. And this is uh, uh, an existing house that I actually, we went out and we measured up and then we put it in the computer. And it puts all the, does all the, the calculations. Hand calculations are a pain. This makes it much easier, much faster. And so if you don't do a load calculation, I do not know how much air is supposed to come out of that register. And so I'm just guessing at it. If I do a load calculation, I know exactly what it's supposed to be. And I can, I can measure that when I'm done. But let's, let, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's talk about uh, uh, some subdivision homes. So <clears throat> how a house is built, how a house faces, has a big uh, factor that factors how much air needs to come out of that register. And... In uh, subdivision homes, what they do is they'll actually build the house. Uh, they'll, they'll draw the up on there. Even if they do the load calculations and deduct design, they're going to do it for all orientations, no matter which way the house faces. So if the house faces south, uh, and that's the worst case, that's the one the, where the biggest loads are, they're going to design their duct system to that, and they're going to build every house the same way. So in, in one instance here, and this is a house that we did in Tracy, as you can see, the duct work here, he has an 8-inch duct. It's an 8-inch duct right here that goes on this system. And it was 160 CFM, 167 CFM. That's how much air was supposed to be delivered to this room. The worst case for this one was that this was that, that this house uh, faced, that this room, when it faced north, this faced north, that was the worst case. However, this house did not face north. In fact, it faces uh, south. <clears throat> and so... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, it faces east, the front of the house does. So let's see what happens when we change. So we change the house from our north direction. Let me go back. 
If you notice that we it was eight inch 167 with a house facing north, but if we just, the worst case for this house is when north is, is this way and it, this is facing west. As you can see, we have three outside walls and we have this big window in the front here and these two little side windows. But because the house changed orientation, this window now is getting a lot of direct sunlight and our CFMs went to 249 and our duck had to go to a 10 inch. So this created a lot of problems. This person in his house, he couldn't keep this as his den, his office. He could not keep it cool. This, this is the way the house faced. Now this is a subdivision house. So all the other people's houses faced in a different direction. They didn't have a problem. His duck did. So as you can see, you know, we went from an eight inch to a 10 inch duck. This is, this is the problem in a lot of homes. There's a huge inventory of houses out there that need to be fixed. Because if the if a house is done incorrectly and your home's done this way, this may be the reason why that room doesn't cool correctly or heat correctly. It has to have the right amount of air. Okay, so how do I how do I know how much air I need out of it? Well, I I'll go in and uh, we will uh, test the house. There's testing. We got to test everything. We're gonna go in with our flow hood. We're gonna measure airflow. We're gonna duct test it. We're going to see how much duct leakage there is in the system. And if I don't have that load to load calculation to compare it to, I don't know what it's supposed to be coming out of the register. Measuring it does me no good if I don't know what it's supposed to be. So you have to have that room to room load calculation along with a flow hood like these flow hoods. And these are two of the flow hoods. These are all guys that work for me. Uh, well, that's me, of course. But uh, we're testing it. We're testing the system to test the airflow. And we, we test all the duct work. And we, these flow hoods aren't cheap. Most companies don't even own a flow hood. I own four, okay? And our guys test, I own about six duct blasters so we can duct test our own duct work. We, don't, we pay a Hearst tester still to test our systems and they test after we're done. However, we, do, we test our own system so we can see how much duct leakage and where we can fix things and it makes our guys, our install crews, much better at what they do. <clears throat> so, the other components of the system performance is again, making sure you test everything, that you're delivering the air that you need to this, this house. Okay, so I, I'm getting a little ahead of myself though. Uh, before I can do any of this testing, I need to get a signed contract. That's just, I mean, it's, it's not something that, a signed contract's not something that we can't do without. This is very expensive to do a lot of this testing. However, it's included in our price. If you want this testing separate, because you want to know what how much air is supposed to come out of that duct and get all the load calculation stuff from us and actually buy that up front, you can. And then we will just take it out of the price of the job when you decide to move forward. We do that often. And and yes, it I give you the stuff. You can take it to somebody else and let them do the work for you. But, uh, you know, do they know how to read it and how to do it? That's one of the tricks. You've got to be able to get somebody that's knowing what they're doing. All right. So... The other thing I'll do is when I go into the house, I'll usually bring my FLIR camera with me. Now, as you can see, this section of this house over here, there's no insulation. Where you see this glowing uh, cherry, uh, uh, like lava, this is all hot spots and this is cold spots. The, uh, this is radiating back. And so this was a cathedral ceiling. And as you can see, that, that cathedral ceiling, the, the insulation's not there. It's radiating back through it. It's making the it much, much hotter. And it should be in that home in the summertime. And in the wintertime, it's making it colder than it needs to be. Uh, also, if you can see the ceiling down below, we have uh, 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 the guy had some can lights installed. And you can see where they took the insulation, put these nice, beautiful can lights in. So he, in his kitchen, and now he's got this beautiful kitchen with terrible heating and cooling in the room. And this is one of the reasons. Now, we'll blow insulation over the top, and we can fix this very easily. Uh, it, it, that's a cheap, easy fix doing insulation. Watch my insulation video. It, it, it's great to do. Now, if you notice something though, I'll give the customer, sometimes I'll hand the customer the floor camera and I say, here, go around and look at stuff. And they'll come and grab me and say, hey, come look at this. And they'll show me these things. And I'm, I'm like, you know, this is the problem. They finally realize that their house sucks and they need to do some stuff about it. Okay, once I have the signed contract, then we're gonna come and do the testing. A lot of the testing that I do uh, takes about two to three hours, depending on what we're doing in the home. And so I have to measure the house up because I got to go put it in the, in the computer. We'll take a lot of pictures. We'll go through and do the load calculation. And none of this can happen until I have that signed calculation. That's very, very important. All right. 
Once I do all the measurements, I'm going to put it in the computer, and then I can do a lot of what ifs. I can tell, I'll put in whether it's got low ease and windows, or it's just standard dual pane aluminum or single pane wood. I put in the insulation of the walls, I, if the floor is a slab floor, a, a raised foundation, does it have insulation, how much insulation is in the attic, and it calculates how much each room gets. Like this bedroom up here at the top, uh, 219 CFM is what this bedroom needs. And so if I go and measure that and it's not 219, then I can, I can fix things. So here's an example of, a, of a, uh, the what ifs that I can do too. I can also calculate and uh, tell a customer how much, uh, if we change things, if I change the R value from R19 to R44, if I change their uh, their windows out, there's a few calculations that I can do, and it will tell them exactly what kind of savings they expect by doing certain changes, by adding insulation or do something else. And here's an example of a house. And as you can see, in the, the green ones means it's right on. The, the CFMs is perfectly all right. It's correct. The blue ones means that there's there's too much air. And the yellow means there's too little. Now this house we've done, uh, this this customer uh, a few years back, about 18 years ago, and it was time to change the system out, put a new system in. We'd done a duct design 18 years ago because we'd replaced this ductwork, and uh, it was fairly well balanced. As you can see, there was only two registers that weren't quite getting enough air, and they were running at about 83% and 82%. So all we needed to do is take the dampers that were already installed in the system and then tweak it down so that we push the air from this laundry room, master bath, and this other bath, and that would balance the system so that the, they would be getting the right amount of air, and then these these rooms would then be getting this kitchen and this uh, master bedroom would be getting the exact amount of air that it's supposed to have. All right. Um, this is why we do the load load, and the dampers allows us to, to do the system. This isn't replacing a system. Can we balance an existing system? That would be an additional charge but we can do that we can add dampers if we need to the other thing is we're going to measure uh the btus that the unit produces and in this particular case this is some engineers in lodi that they work for lawrence livermore lab and they their home they bought this house somebody else had installed a system a few years earlier and they uh, uh they'd had a, some problems with it and as you can see here um that the system measured we measured twenty six thousand btus and these were three ton units so that was only delivering 74% of capacity. The wattage was, we measured the watts, we measured the duct leakage. The duct leakage was a little high, 16.3. 15% is code for existing duct work. If it's all new duct work, it should be around 5% uh, or less. <clears throat> and you can also see that the supply air, we only get 67% of the supply air out of the system and 66% of the return air going back into the system. What does that mean? That means that they, they have some duct leakage, that's a portion of it, but they're also their ducts aren't sized correctly. That's also an issue. Now this is the downstairs system, and this is the upstairs is what we ended up changing out. This is when they wanted to change, when they're having the biggest problems with. So we went in, and, and if you look at this, you can see there's a big, there's a, a, a big number here. This is TESP 1.11. That's supposed to be 0 0.5. Five, a half inch of static and it's actually 1.11 inches of static more than double what that means is the system will never deliver the airflow it's supposed to have and so <clears throat> this upstairs system uh, same thing it's it's double the static pressure so we're not getting the airflow that's one reason we're only getting 91 percent and 76 percent of the airflow so and this one's a little closer this one we were getting 30,000 BTUs and again it was a three tons so we're 85 percent that's actually pretty good for most systems, you know. The bottom system was not. Now, they weren't having problems with the bottom system because it was downstairs, and in the summertime, it's cooler in the downstairs, and it's going to be the upstairs, so the loads weren't too big. By the way, the units were a little oversized. We, we The upstairs one was sized correctly. The downstairs one should have been a two-ton, technically, when we did the load calculation. Okay. So here's another that same system that we talked about earlier where the, that room needed to go to 266 CFM. And so we did our duct design here. You could see where all the airflow issues were. So in this particular system, after we did that, we figured out what we need to do is we need to add a return air duct uh, to this room here, which, which we needed extra return, and we needed to uh, balance the system and run a new supply over here, which we did. So all those things happened. We went in and put all that in, and the system we put in 
was a three and a half ton. The size correctly, the old system was a three and a half, which were taken out, and it was size correctly. It was they needed a three and a half ton. It was the one we we're putting in was a sixteen C or fourteen E E R. Um, the uh, when we're done installing, all we let left to do is test it. So we're going to go in and test it, and we go in it, and here's our measurements afterwards. We're airflow, and if you notice this one fifty two here. We're way under still what we needed to be, even after we ran the new supply. So what we ended up doing is we ended up balancing the system slightly <clears throat> with uh, by going in. Like this one room here was getting 237 CFM, so we added a damper to push more air where it needed to be. Because again, we only added a duct. We didn't change any of the duct work in the house. We only added the one supply and the one return. Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we added two more other supplies. These two supplies, we did uh, bump them up. But we needed to balance the system on their existing duct work because it was they were feeding too much air, so we went in and did that. Once we've got all that information, we measure all the airflow, and as you can see, the airflow that comes out of the system, we were measuring, uh, we left it at four ton. We left the airflow at four ton. It's supposed to be 400 CFM per ton, so that this one, it should be 1,400 CFM. But in our area here in California, the extra airflow that we get out of the system, that will give you a little better cooling because we're more of a sensible loads here in California. So in this area of California, Tracy area. Uh, so it, we, we did the system, 1633, 1634, so we're right at the four tons of air. And then uh, we averaged it out, so we're getting 3267, divide that by two, 1634 average in the house. So we have an average airflow that I have through the system, and now I can do a bunch of other measurements. I can go in and I can put my probes in the system. I use field piece probes. I put these probes into the return and supply duct, and I can measure the BTUs that the unit puts out. And this is the actual calculation here. The BTUs per hour is equal to the CFM, the 1634, times 4.5, times the delta H, which the eighth is the enthalpy. That's a change in difference between the return of supply in this case was 5.5 and it does a calculation if you do the math it was at 40,442 and the the app showed me 40,485 so there's probably a decimal point in there that the app has that I don't have in this particular uh, measurement so it was, which would I believe I would go with the field piece measurement that I did the screenshot on this was off my phone so the other thing <clears throat> when we measured this you got to remember this is a 31 and a half ton. However, the unit's only rated for 41,500. It doesn't make a full 42,000 BTUs or three and a half tons, 12,000 BTUs per ton. So we could take that and look at it. And we find out that actually we're running at 97.5% of capacity. Now this was on an 84 degree day when we measured the temperature. So it, it it's it was cooler. It was it was cooler than the 95 that they're rated for, and you're going to get a little better numbers because of that. 95, that's acceptable percent. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you can get 95% out of any system, that's really good and we're at 97.5. Cause you're gonna remember one thing, this is in lab conditions. This is when they measure these uh, originally and, and put these ratings together. So this is a very important factor. Okay, so the second part of the system is of course we're gonna measure uh, the electrical consumption. I know the BTU, so now I need to measure the, the watts, the amps, the volts, and the power factor. And I can use two different meters. I use I like to use this Testo right here. Uh, it gives me very accurate readings. It also does power factor. It does amps, power factor, amps, and volts. And you do the multiplication, and you do that on each leg of the electrical. Whether on the this is a furnace, so we we do the 110 volts to ground, and we measure 120 volts, and and our, our everything that we need to do it. So it it, it we can calculate it. Uh, and in this case here, you can see it was consuming 719 watts. And we can do the math, volts times amps times power factor gives you your, your, your watts consumed. And then we got to do the same thing for the unit outside. So we go out and we do the same measurements. We're going to do the math. We're going to, we do it for each leg. So there's line one, and I'm using my meter in this case, 122, 10.2 uh, amps and 0.85 power factor gives us 1,058 watts. And on the lower uh, on the other leg, it's 1,100 watts. So we add those two together, and it shows that we have a 2,158 watts total being consumed by the outdoor unit. And now we add in the 719 watts for the uh, the indoor unit, and we come up with 2,877 watts. So let's do the math again. So our BTUs, uh, if we have our BTUs per hour, which we know we are getting 40,485 BTUs out of the system, we can then divide that by uh, 
uh, the BTUs by uh, the watts, and that'll give us the EER of the system. The EER could be measured in the field. That stands for energy efficiency ratio, and it's a measurement of the watts it takes to produce this many BTUs. So we divide the uh, BTUs by the watts, and it gives us our EER. In this case, the EER in this unit was 14. Okay, and you remember the rating? I said it was 16 SEER, 14 EER. We're hitting our numbers. It's right at 14 EER. The other thing, I can divide the EER by 0 0.875, and that will give me the approximate SEER for the system. And C SEER stands for Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio. It is a measurement that's done in the, in the lab. It's actually a computer calculation or done in the lab. You can't do this in the field because it's partial loads. It's the loads of the system at 25% load, 50% load, 75% load, and 100% load, and then it's averaged, and that gives you your SER. We cannot do that in the field. I cannot produce partial loads in the field. That's only in a lab or on a computer. All right, so once I have that, that gives us approximate 16 SEER. Remember the system was a 1614? Well, we're hitting our numbers. That's exactly where we're supposed to be. So this guy, this, this home is getting the BTUs it's supposed to have. It's getting the EER it's supposed to have and the SEER. And we're within 97%. You can't get any better than that. So let's review it again. 96.4%, uh, uh, 14 EER. And where SEER is approximately 16 SEER. And if it's a three and a half ton, rated at 16, 14 EER. Well, you know, it doesn't get any better than that. We hit all our numbers. Welcome success, people. This is what you should be doing on your house. This is system performance. Installation has a huge factor. Without installation or proper installation, none of this stuff's going to happen. But design is also very important. If you do not have the proper design, you will never ever get the BTUs out of the system you're supposed to. You'll never get airflow. Rooms will be hot and cold. System performance, it has to be measured. So if you're a contractor and you're listening to this, buy a flow hood, take some classes, learn how to do this. If you're a homeowner and you, you need your system replaced and you want to make sure that you get what you paid for, make sure the guy's doing a load calculation room to room He's measuring your airflows prior to, to doing the job if the system's working. If it's not, you can't. And that when he's done, he measures them afterwards. Also, if he's measuring those ahead of time after he does his load calculations, he'll, he can come back to you and say, we need to fix this, this, and this. And it may mean some extra money that you have to pay for some extra work to be done because we don't know till we do the testing. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. And if, it, it, if it, uh, you like it, please like and subscribe and then hit the uh, notifications button so that you get notified the next time I do a video. And thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.